Good Friday morning. This is the Great Basin Smoke Dispersion Briefing for this Friday, November 4th. Taking a look at the past week in terms of precipitation, uh, we've had uh, fairly wet conditions across the, the northern portions of the Great Basin. These areas in green are anywhere from a half inch to uh, an inch and a half here in the yellow, covering much of the northern half of Nevada and into the mountainous areas of Idaho and Wyoming, and a bit across the Wasatch, but across our southern areas, very little, if any, measurable precipitation. And on the right-hand side, you can see percent of normal, much above normal in the purple shades, 300-400% of normal for the week, much drier than normal uh, in the shades of the yellows and red, basically less than 25% of normal through there. Here's a look at our infrared satellite imagery, and we have high pressure over most of the Great Basin where skies are clear. There is a weak low pressure, upper level low pressure system over Arizona, New Mexico, starting to spread some moisture into our southern areas. Uh, very little, if any, precipitation associated with it, but there'll be some cloud cover around. A much larger, deeper storm system now plowing into the Pacific Northwest, but uh, it'll have a tough time uh, reaching the Great Basin. And a look at this afternoon's weather on the left-hand side. We have that weak upper-level low that's centered across Arizona, uh, pulling in some mid-level moisture. We see areas in the green here. You'll have fairly solid cloud cover, uh, pretty clear areas further to the north. And on the right-hand side, in terms of ventilation or dispersion, um, areas in the white, uh, quite good dispersion. It's when you get towards the reds is where it starts decreasing. So, of course, in our southern areas in the vicinity of that low pressure, uh, southern areas should have pretty good burning conditions dispersion-wise. gets a bit worse across northern Utah and southeastern parts of Idaho as well as parts of uh, Nevada. We can break down those individual components in terms of transport winds on the left. He's some pretty good winds across our southern areas, but very light near calm in those purple to bluish shades. And mixing heights, so this is our backup uh, model running, so the colors are a little different, different from what you're used to seeing, but the darker greens and the uh, bluish shades are uh, mixing heights basically at or below 400 feet. Uh, much better mixing heights when you get to the lighter shades of green, and especially in the oranges where your mixing heights are getting further up, actually in, in terms of meters, getting up around maybe 1,000 or, or higher. So that's uh, our look through there. A look at Saturday's weather. Uh, that low pressure starts shifting up to the east. We are under a pretty strong high pressure influence. Uh, there's a strong storm system pushing into the Pacific Northwest. However, you'll see it doesn't make much further progress inland. On the right-hand side, you see our ventilation index where um, areas in the red indicate poor dispersion. Areas in the white indicate fairly good dispersion. Looking at the individual components, uh, fairly light winds where you see areas in the purple and blue uh, to the western areas increasing southerly winds ahead of that Pacific storm system. On the right hand side, mixing heights uh, improving in a lot of areas. That lighter shade of green you see here is somewhere around 500 to 1,000 meters, which is basically 1,500 to 3,000 feet. Uh, poor dispersion in the darker shades that you see through the Salt Lake Valley and uh, some other areas. Now, if we look at Sunday afternoon, uh, we do see a little wave of energy coming on through, um, kind of knocking that high pressure out real briefly, but the core of the Pacific system still stays offshore. You can see that our dispersion improves, uh, our ventilation improves quite a bit. You see a lot more in the areas of white, very little in terms of red, so that's uh, some good news through there. And Sunday afternoon, you can see that we have good transport flow coming in across the parts of northern Nevada and, and across the uh, Wasatch and uh, Utah as well. Um, our mixing highs on the right-hand side also show some improvement as well. Now, locally for Utah, the clearing index produced by the National Weather Service um, indicates that overall poor dispersion continues across the, the desert areas, probably uh, Saturday being the worst. But you see some improvement on Sunday, like we saw with our previous uh, set of maps as some upper-level energy makes the atmosphere a bit more unstable. Looking at our three-day precipitation accumulation, you can see just a little bit of moisture getting into uh, parts of southern and southeastern Utah, uh, maybe a low-end wetting rain at most, uh, otherwise uh, maybe staying just towards uh, parts of the Arizona Strip perhaps. Um, otherwise, maybe a few light showers over uh, some of the mountains of central Idaho, but maybe just about a tenth of an inch, uh, most of the rainfall up in the Pacific Northwest. 
Then looking down the road for Monday, we have high pressure re-establishing itself across the Great Basin. We start seeing more areas in the red and yellow, starting to see a decrease in overall dispersion. On Tuesday, we see that the high pressure ridge still in control, um, similar, and again, uh, overall uh, fairly poor dispersion, except maybe across parts of Nevada they may see uh, uh, a bit better through there. Uh, precipitation overall for our region, none uh, for days four through five. It's basically Monday and Tuesday. And then going down the road for Wednesday, we have high pressure dominating across the area, uh, poor dispersion, especially as you go further east, and uh, really actually gets worse on Thursday. The high pressure continues to dominate all the stormy energy goes into the Pacific Northwest. Uh, we see the dispersion conditions, again, remaining fairly poor across most areas. Precipitation. So we go through day six and seven, again, dry. So for large scale uh, burn projects, at least uh, you won't have too much in the way of wet fuels. Uh, things will probably burn during the peak uh, heating hours as short as the days are getting. And really, if we look into the eight to 14 day outlook, which takes us through November 11th through the 17th, uh, we see no significant change in the pattern. Temperatures averaging much above normal. Uh, precipitation averaging significantly below normal. Uh, so this takes us to about a week before Thanksgiving. We continue the warm, dry pattern. This concludes our smoke briefing. Thanks, and we'll be back with our next briefing on Monday. Again, they're typically Mondays and Fridays, except for holidays. Have a great weekend.